And what we learn in the world is something like this. Uh, how much can I do without crossing the line? Uh, how much of this can I eat without getting diabetes? How much of this can I pilfer without getting caught or going to jail? How close can I get to the edge of destruction, annihilation? How close can I get? Can I cross the line? How far over the line can I cross? If I'm driving, and the speed limit is 35, how, how far past that limit can I go without the police stopping me? See, our thinking is not based on, this comes from, this is just natural thinking. To us, it's just natural. You know, if they says 35, you can do 45 and get away with it. Right? If you're only supposed to eat so much of this, you can eat just, you know, one more piece of cheesecake. It might, you know, it's going to make you feel queasy for a minute, but it's so good, it's not going to do anything really. How, how far can I go? How much can I get away with? Any you guys think back with me as children when this kind of thinking started? How much can I do without getting a whipping? You know, how many cookies can I take before someone will notice that I've been stealing cookies out the cookie jar? If I get caught, who can I blame? How much can, this is not doing what God has commanded us to do, to walk in wisdom. Can you see how this would affect your life if you, instead of asking a question, how much can I do to get away with and get away with? But if you ask the question in accordance with the commandment from the Lord my God, what would be the wise thing for me to do? Well, someone wrote a song about part of that if you can't afford the time, <laughs> don't do the crime, right? Wouldn't that be a wise thing to do? <laughs> but just to have your whole life based on a premise that comes from God's word rather than what comes from Satan and the world. That's revolution, and, and it would be revolutionary in our thinking. What would be the wise use of my time? What would be the wise thing for me to do? So what this book does, it poses a question, and the question is, in light of my past experiences, what would be the wise thing for me to do? What happened to that? Who can answer that question for you? Does any person can answer that question for you? In light of my past experiences, what would be the wise thing for me to do? You guys know my past experiences? Then you can't answer that for me. Do I know your past experiences? No. Yeah. See, so everyone's past experiences are different. So who has to answer that question? We do. All right, it's a personal question. In light of my past experiences, what would be the wise thing for me to do in my relationship with? The last time I did this, you know, I just had a cup of coffee with him. 
Is there anything wrong with having a cup of coffee? See, this is what the world teaches. It's nothing wrong with it. Is there anything wrong with having a cup of coffee with someone of the opposite sex? No. No. <laughs> and, and we rationalize then, don't we? There's nothing wrong with it. Hmm? Based on my past experiences now, that's something different. I, because my past experiences started off as a cup of coffee, but then it was lunch, and then it was dinner, and then it was let's get together and pray. So after you come to, based on your own past experiences, you come to the next question, in light of my current circumstances, what would be the wise thing for me to do? My current circumstances say, well, my husband told me not to do that. Or my wife sure doesn't have any understanding in that area at all. She doesn't know it's just a cup of coffee. <laughs> in light of my current, can anyone else answer that question for you? No. Because your current circumstances, see, we have to take and start thinking different from the world. And we're not talking about right or wrong sinning or not sinning. It's no sin to have a cup of coffee with somebody. It's not right or wrong in and of itself. But is it wise to do it? In light of my current circumstance, I'm having trouble at home. I don't think my husband understands me or my wife doesn't understand me. And I'm just going to have a cup of coffee in light of my current circumstances. Maybe I don't need that temptation. In light of my current circumstances, I know right now I'm weak and I'm vulnerable. In light of my current circumstances, I don't need to be taking that money that belongs to the company home this weekend because my debts are up to my, I'm up to my eyebrows in debt. Maybe I don't need that temptation. There's nothing wrong with it. The boss says you can take the money home. You can put it in the bank. No one knows how much came in but you. But you're in such financial straits, you know that that temptation, you get that money. It's nothing wrong with taking $10, $15. I'm going to pay it back. Is anything wrong with borrowing money? You're going to pay it back. I mean, right away, put it in the bank Monday. You're going to get it Sunday evening. You're going to make that money up. So if you spend it on Saturday, there's nothing wrong with that. Is anything wrong with borrowing money that you put back? No. How much can I borrow? Where's the line? How much could I take and no one miss it? Hey, they got millions. They've got this is a big company, big concern. They're, they're successful. Where does this reasoning come from? From when we're children, how many cookies can I take without anyone noticing it? And we base our lifestyle on these things that we get from the world. And all of these things in the world, there's nothing in the world but what, but what, Pastor Jackie? There's nothing in the world but the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So if we got this teaching and this thinking from the world, it involves the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It is not the way we have been commanded to think. We're told to walk circumspectly, acting in wisdom. The why, what's the wise use of our time? What's the wise use of our money? What's the wise use of, of our interpersonal relationships? In the third part of that question, it goes against what the world says is in light of my future hopes and dreams, what would be the wise thing for me to do? 
we all have future hopes and dreams and plans. Well, if I got caught taking this money and got a case for thievery, and I want to be a certified public accountant, and I could never be bonded. See, my future hopes and dreams, I want to be this. I want to be an attorney. I want to do this. I want to be in politics. What if I got to the place I was arrested for a felony and could never even vote? In light of my future hopes, can, can I answer that for you? No. Oh. And what, I want you to notice what God commands us to do. It has nothing, it's not addressing right and wrong, good and bad, sinning or not sinning. It addresses us walking in wisdom. What is the wise thing for me to do? That's what this book is all about. But you notice the title of this book is Ask It. The challenge with what I just said is this question in light of my past experiences, my present circumstances, and my future hopes and dreams, what would be the wise thing for me to do? The problem with this question is asking it. Because we already know, for the most part, the answer we had come up with. And if we know the answer would not be something that would be walking in wisdom, we don't ask the question. Because if we ask the question, we couldn't do that. We wouldn't get involved. We wouldn't get that close to the line. Now, how far can I go before I get, how many drinks can I have before I'm going to go over the edge? I can just think personally, back years ago when I was drinking, get to the point that two drinks, I was as drunk as I was going to get all night long. If you've never seen an alcoholic, you realize that most alcoholics can only drink one or two drinks before they're drunk. But they're not going to get any drunker the whole night. So if you sit there trying to drink with them and you're not a drinker, you're going to be sick, throwing up, they're going to be talking, oh, you can't hold your liquor, huh? Come on, give them another one. Run them, run them, keep running. Give them all a drink. You don't want anyone to go home. But if you're sitting there trying to hang with these people, you're blind drunk. Now look at this. I'm going to use that example. Look at this. If you don't ask the question because you know the answer, let's say I used it with the drinking, and I don't ask the question when that second or third drink about to be turned up. Because I know I shouldn't drink it, so I'm not going to ask this question. If I don't ask the question, I don't have my own best interest at heart. So right away I learned what? Something about myself. If I don't have my own best interest at heart, who does? Yes? I, I put it this way, to walk in every area of your life, just like a circle, in wisdom, in every area of your life. Walk in wisdom in your finances, in your spiritual growth, in your education, in your health, and even in your vacating and relaxing and your relaxation. To walk in wisdom in every area of your life. Hmm? With your associates, who you associate with, every area relationally. And see, what you just said is so important. It's all a part of this. 
in a scripture. This is how I'm sharing with you what's in the book, but what's in the book came from the scriptures. It came from God's word. It's one of the most practical books that I have ever read in my life. And I've read a few over the years, trying to make a better Richard. See, that's, isn't that why people read self-help books? Because they need what? Hell, I need a lot of help. <laughs> no. When I tell you guys I was a fool going someplace to do foolish things, that's what I was before I got saved. And I know within myself, outside of Christ Jesus, I'm still that same fool. It wouldn't take two weeks if I decided to walk away from the Word and walk away from the church, for me to go back to doing the same foolish things that I was doing before. Thank you. Jesus is my wisdom. Thank you. This Word, I need, you guys might not need this, but I do, I need this to keep me as on the straight and narrow, as much straight and narrow as I'm on right now. I need this word. I can't walk away from it and say, say, well, I can handle things. No, I can't handle things. Hallelujah. If you know, like me, that you're a mess going someplace to mess up, you don't need to go back. You don't need to see how close to the line can you get before you cross over the line. Mm -hmm. Now, the challenge with this is we don't like to use this term when we say we won't ask the question. We don't like to use the term, but you know what the Bible calls in the book of Proverbs? Let me make sure you don't think I'm talking about you because it, it's offensive. So I'll let you, I'm talking about me. Yeah, the, yeah the, 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 the Bible calls this person, calls me, if I know to do better and don't. If I know to ask the question and don't, because the answer I would get would be something that's not wise, the Bible calls me a fool. And I learned that in that area, Hopefully it's only in that area. But the Bible doesn't really focus down to just that one area. It just says a person is a fool. And we don't like to think of ourselves. I don't like to think of myself as being a fool. I don't, but I know outside of Christ Jesus, I'm a fool. But God uses the weak things. Isn't that what the word says? To confound the wise. So me being weak and being a fool, I set out years ago, I have downloaded from the computer more than once every scripture that has the word wisdom in it. And studied those words. And then every word that had the word understanding in it and study the scriptures and go through and eliminate the ones that were talking to this guy or about this situation and say, how can this apply to me? And going to the Word and downloading every scripture that has the word understanding. Why? Because wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. So I couldn't study wisdom without studying understanding. This Bible, this Word of God, is my wisdom. I didn't want to be a fool any longer. <laughs> I might have gotten out of it sooner if I would have understood really what a fool was. A fool is a person that knows to do better, but won't. I know I need to ask that question, but I won't. The Bible says, Richard, you're a fool. And then there's something, turn to Proverbs. Mm 